and light itself is not more persistent than the stream of feminine discourse. Edwin Abbott, Flatland. Hello, everyone. I want to congratulate you for having made it this far in our course. Throughout our videos, we have been following Don Quixote on his adventures. Now we approach the conclusion to Cervantes' masterpiece. I hope you will continue to enjoy the content and educational resources of the course. Remember, you can get certified for each module, and remember to join us on Facebook and Twitter. With this video, we begin San Jorge, that is the third and final module of part two of our course, Discover Don Quixote de la Mancha. So let's begin. Chapter 48 of Don Quixote II relates an absurd but intense nocturnal encounter between two of the novel's oldest characters, Don Quixote and Doña Rodriguez. On one level, we note the growing presence of women. As in the Sierra Morena episodes of Don Quixote Part I, women's actions and desires predominate in Aragon, serving as preludes to the roles of Teresa Altisidora, Ana Felix, and Claudia Jerónima in the last half of Don Quixote Part II. On a second level, the chaos that ensues and hints of an ethnic clash between Christians and Moors all recall Don Quixote's violent encounter with Maritornes in Don Quixote Part I. On a third level, note the symbolic sexual dyad formed by Doña Rodriguez and Don Quixote. Like ancient lovers passing in the night, they frighten each other. Each is described as a phantom but then they come to terms and take each other's hands in a platonic, private wedding ceremony that causes our Moorish author to comment. Here, Thide Amete opens a parenthesis and swears by Mohammed that in order to see the two of them going hand in hand from door to bed, he would have given the best of his two gelabas. Rodriguez seeks Don Quixote's help and visits his room unannounced. As her key opens his door, his first thought, as in the Maritornes episode, is that the enamored damsel has come to assault his chastity. He makes a Neoplatonic oath to Dulcinea, the most beautiful woman on earth, the one whom I have engraved and impressed at the center of my heart. He also recalls the theme of metamorphosis that always accompanies Dulcinea, proclaiming his love regardless of her actual condition, whether she be the Tobosan peasant of Don Quixote Part II, Chapter 10, one of Garcilaso's nymphs, or even the woman in the cave of Montesinos of Don Quixote Part II, Chapter 35. Whether you are, my lady, transformed into a vulgar peasant girl or a nymph from the Golden Tagus, weaving together cloths of gold and silk, or whether Merlin or Montesinos have you where they desire. Cervantes' technique of narrative simultaneity underscores the link between Dulcinea's uncertain status and Rodriguez's strange visit. The ending of these words and the opening of the door happened all at once. Did you know? In Europe, around 1600, life expectancy was approximately 45 years. Notice that Don Quixote is close to 50 years old. Next, we have an amazing image of Don Quixote standing up in his bed, staring down at Rodriguez from his watchtower. He crosses himself in fear. As she approaches, she is also startled, dropping her candle and leaving them both in the dark. When Rodriguez tries to flee, Don Quixote asks her to identify herself, insinuating that she is a spirit from purgatory, another major theme of Don Quixote Part Two. If you are a soul doing penance, tell me so. He claims his profession of knight errantry still requires him to save her, even to do right by the souls in purgatory. Hilariously, he makes her promise that she is not a go-between. In response, Rodriguez claims that she is not so old that she still has her soul in her body and all of her teeth. She also mentions this land of Aragon so that this weird encounter is related to the geography of Spain. Quixotic mission. In the meeting between Doña Rodriguez and Don Quixote, what would Said Hamete give to see them together? A, his best jalaba. B, his most expensive camel. C, his first son. Correct answer, A, his best jalaba. 
The episode's sexual implications grow. When Rodriguez leaves to retrieve another candle, Don Quixote doubts his chastity, reasoning that the devil might be trying to tempt him. Thanks to the narrator's access to Don Quixote's inner thoughts here, we learn that he is a virgin. And who knows whether this isolation, this occasion, or this silence will awaken in me desires that lie dormant and, at the end of my years, cause me to fall where I have never even stumbled. Don Quixote leaps out of bed to shut the door, but Rodriguez returns. Now it is her turn to suspect something sexual. Are we safe, Sir Knight? For I do not take it as a very chaste sign that your grace has gotten out of bed. Don Quixote asks her the same thing. I should be asking the same thing, madam, and thus I ask if I am to be safe from being assaulted and violated. He points to the impropriety of the situation, because I am not made of marble, nor you of bronze, nor is it now 10 in the morning, and in a room more enclosed and secret than must have been the cave in which the treacherous and daring Aeneas took his pleasure of the beautiful and compassionate Dido. It's another cave. And note how Don Quixote has again become feminized, and how Cervantes has inverted the same encounter between Aeneas and Dido, previously alluded to by Altisidora. This is so hilarious and odd that Fidiamete again makes a sarcastic comment. For those of us who are older, though, there is something heartbreaking here. That's all for now. Find out what happens with our characters in our next discussion of this fascinating text. If you liked this video and want to continue learning more about the knight errant Don Quixote de la Mancha, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel here. Also, you can enroll in our free online course on Don Quixote by clicking here.